Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. This is the new Kindle Scribe. Now, I have not used many e-ink tablets, but this one has a pen. It's packed in. Also, I reviewed the Remarkable 2 about two years back, and it has the most realistic feeling digital pencil I've ever used anywhere. Can Amazon replicate that feel while keeping me in their ecosystem? Let's check it out. Hello, welcome, salutations. My name is Brad I review tech for creative professionals. For those of you who watch this channel on the regular, the Kindle is probably not going to fit your needs. If you wanna make full color digital art, you're better off going with an iPad or an Android tablet over something like this, which is an e-ink device. This does have some advantages over say an iPad. For example, it's thinner, it's lighter, and most importantly, the battery life is crazy good. That's why these are so popular for books. You can charge charge it up before a trip and not worry about the battery dying for days and days, even weeks. Your phone or your tablet screen is constantly refreshing. That means each pixel on that screen is changing every 30 or 60 or 120 times a second. On this screen, once those pixels are turned on, they stay on or off until you change something. And because of that, that is a huge battery saver. Some e-ink displays don't have backlights. That also helps save on battery life even more. This one does. And when I have that backlight on, it does drain the battery significantly faster. There's a scrubber that lets you turn it on really bright or just toggle it off completely. But still, we're talking about this being rated for 10 weeks. Yes, weeks, not days, not hours, weeks of battery life. Now, when that backlight is on, there's also this added benefit of being able to change the hue of your screen. You can slide it more towards a yellowish orange hue or all the way up to a white slash bluish hue. There are, of course, huge downsides to a device like this over something like an iPad. Other than being a black and white screen, it just doesn't really do much. You can read on it, you can take notes on it, and that that's about it. It also doesn't feel as snappy as a traditional phone or tablet. You can see it refreshing before your eyes and it sometimes takes a second after making a gesture to do any kind of action. I noticed if I'm reading a book, it's really snappy and it's really fast, but if I'm doing anything else on this thing, it feels really slow and it's slow enough where I wonder, is this actually going to do the thing I asked it to do? Those little UI amenities that your phone has, they aren't here. If you've used a Kindle before, you know what you're getting into. If you have not, that's something you should be aware of. Let's take a look at the hardcore specs here. We have a 10.2 inch screen. This is the biggest Kindle that Amazon makes. The screen is 300 DPI, has an anti-gloss coating on it, which of course is good for glare, but it also gives it a little bit of texture. So when you're drawing with the pen, it doesn't glide around so much. It feels very organic. This comes in three storage sizes, the smallest being 16 gigabytes. That's what I have here, but you could also get it in 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes. Now, just hearing those numbers, it doesn't sound like a lot of space and that's because it's not. But if you start to think about what this is used for books, those aren't very big. However, if you're gonna be downloading a lot of audiobooks to this, you're probably gonna to wanna to spring for the larger size. I already talked about the battery. That's a big selling point, 10 weeks on a single charge. The pen doesn't need to charge though. It does stick magnetically along the side for storage with the device. Now this Kindle is really, really thin. I'd say about half the width of an iPad. So it's, it's really thin. That also means it's about half the width of your stylus as well. So even though the magnet that holds the pencil to the side isn't bad, it's very easy to accidentally knock it off. I would imagine that if I was stuffing this in the bag, the pencil would probably come off all the time. So that's something to be aware of. And all of this comes in at $340. Now, before I dive any deeper, I do want to shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. You already know Squarespace can build you a great website, but they can also give you all the tools you need to take your business to the next level. Start by checking out all the insights available in their analytics, where your site visits are coming from, where sales are coming from, analyze which channels are most effective, improve your website, and build a marketing strategy based on top keywords and the most popular products and content. Squarespace also provides SEO tools. Every Squarespace website website and online store comes with a whole suite of integrated features and useful guides that will help you maximize prominence among search results. And of course, you can stand out in any inbox with Squarespace's email campaigns. Select email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like your colors and your logo. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's take a look at the device itself. It is really thin. The 
pen does snap here along the side and there is a button that you could press to toggle it off. Now, since I am looking at this from the point of view of illustration and drawing, I'm gonna be spending most of my time down here in this tab. This is the notebooks tab. So it starts you off on this gallery screen and you can see I only have one document here, one sketchbook open. If I hit the plus button, I can create a new notebook or I can create a folder. I'm gonna go ahead and create a notebook. And one of the things that starts you off with here right off the bat is there's all sorts of different templates that you can work with. I like working with blank pages, but if you like a dot notebook, if you like a line notebook, a grid notebook, there's all sorts of stuff here. I can also name it H-E-L-L-O. Let's just go with the grid for now, and I'm gonna go ahead and tap on create. One thing that immediately jumped out at me is there aren't a lot of settings here. For example, I think this grid is too dark. I would like it lighter, but there's no way that I've found to really jump in here and change that. Over here on the left side, are all my tools. There's a way to shrink those tools, make them go away. We'll pull them up. And basically you have a pen, you have a highlighter, and you have a way to erase all of that. There's also this finger button, and basically what that does is it turns your pen into your finger. Since I have two hands, I'm just gonna use my hand instead of the finger. There's also an undo button and a uh, redo button. And then the last thing we could do is we can move this to the right side. That's another thing that this does really well is I can flip it upside down. If you're right-handed and you wanna hold this with your right hand and draw with your left hand, it lets you do that. Uh, that's part of the reason why it has this extra space over here, this extra uh, bezel. So that's it. This is super duper simple. Um, and that was kind of disappointing for me. I would like a few more features in here to make this usable, at least for art and illustration. I think if you're taking notes, it works pretty well, but the only settings we have is if you tap on one of the items is you can change the thickness. For example, we have a fine tip pen, a thin, medium, thick, heavy. There's not a differentiation between say a pencil and a pen like there is on the Remarkable 2. You're really only getting a ballpoint pen. And if you draw lightly, you'll get a thin line. And as I apply more pressure, I can tell it's getting thicker, but it's not getting that much thicker. You're not getting much variation at all when you're applying more pressure with a pen. You can do the same thing with a highlighter. Uh, tapping on that is gonna give you thick, medium, fine. Uh, and I believe you could do the same thing, yes, with the eraser. Now, one of the things that I did notice while I was erasing is this doesn't erase like your traditional drawing app. It seems to, how do I say it? It erases more than I expected to. So if I just tap on a line, um, it, it kind of, it's actually easier to show with the highlighter. Let me pull that out. So I'm gonna just fill this space with, uh, with my highlighter here. And when I go to erase it and I just draw a line through it, you'd expect it to look like that, but when I let it go, it erases more than that. It, it erases a larger chunk. And it's doing the same thing with, with the line tool as well. Now, if you're doing handwriting or that sort of thing and it's cleaning up like most of a letter, that's that's probably a good thing. But when you're drawing and you're looking for that accuracy and you're looking for the ability to really just erase what you're trying to erase, that's a bad thing. There are probably three things that hold this back from being like a good sketchbook on the go for me personally. The first one is a pencil tool, just only being able to draw with one kind of line. It's a little bit disappointing. I wish I could differentiate sketching from kind of the pen ink line thing. That's more of a preference on my end, but that kind of variety would be kind of nice. Also having a little bit more pressure sensitivity in the pen come through with some of these tools would also be nice. Now, the second thing I really miss are layers. If you're drawing and you're, you're placing things, even taking really detailed notes, being able to put something on a layer and being able to move that element around is really, really nice. Right now, this operates as a piece of paper and it doesn't go above and beyond just being a piece of paper. Which goes to number three, I would really wanna be able to zoom in if I wanna do detail work like erase something or go in and get some really detailed line, line things up really well. It's really hard to do without any kind of zoom function which pretty much every digital art app has these days. Now if I wanna go back, I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the top, wait for a second and then go back to notebook. And if I was going to use this as a on the go sketchbook that has a really super long battery, one of the things I'd want to be able to do then is take my sketches and export them to some other device, whether it's my desktop or an iPad or something like that in order to 
finish the work. Basically take my sketches from my sketchbook and, and work with them to create full blown line art, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna tap on these three lines here and it's gonna bring up my options. I can open it, rename it. I could remove it completely, delete it, all that stuff. I can tap on share. And basically here my options are to share it by sending it to myself as an email. Now I did open up one of the PDFs that I sent to myself and opened it up in Adobe Illustrator. I was curious since these lines kind of behave like vectors when you erase them, I was wondering maybe they are vector lines, which could be kind of cool. Unfortunately, they're not. What this app is basically doing is it's taking a JPEG and sticking it in a PDF for you. Right now, I would not recommend this for drawing. The tools are just a little too simplistic. Now, I've never used a Kindle before of any kind, so there were some things here that pleasantly surprised me. For example, my Audible books were totally accessible on the device. Even though this thing doesn't have a speaker, so I can't listen to them directly, I can pair some Bluetooth headphones to this and listen to my books that way. Now, I did know that it would be really easy to get eBooks onto this since it is integrated so well with Amazon's other products. Uh, that is probably the biggest part of the appeal here for me. There's also a web browser. This thing is integrated pretty well with Goodreads. Just all those little things that you expect, even if it's not a ton of bells and whistles, it works. Basically, if you're all in on the Amazon ecosystem, this is super easy to use. The setup here was very, very minimal. The only quirk I ran into is reading graphic novels on this. You can read graphic novels on this. This has multiple shades of gray, as you've seen. I own several on Amazon slash Comixology already, um, but whenever I try to download any of them onto this device, I got a bunch of errors. No idea why? Only happens with comics, did not happen with ebooks, did not happen with audiobooks. But since we're dealing with shades of gray, that's probably not the way I want to consume comics anyway. Now, with that said, if I wasn't reviewing this thing, I don't think I would ever buy it. $340, that's a big ask for what you're getting here. I think if you're just taking notes, if you wanna annotate PDFs or that sort of thing, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna enjoy this. It's gonna do what you need it to do. If you're looking for it as a sketchbook you could take with you, meh, maybe less than meh. You might be better off getting an entry level iPad or getting a cheap Kindle for reading and a cheap Samsung tablet for drawing. You combine those together, it's gonna to be about the same price. So that is the Kindle Scribe. I did dust off my old Remarkable 2 for this review to do some compare and contrasting. It has been a while since I used it. I was thinking about doing a full video where I compare these two. If you're interested in that, let me know down below in the comments. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.